Okay, hello and welcome back. We are back in Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Uh, the light is does flash a bit in this game uh, because it's been upgraded to the PS5 and it's, yeah, the natural light is a bit off. Um, but I still love playing this game, love enjoying it. So let's get a good view going. Yeah, we'll go with this one. So, uh, as you can imagine, I've, from the title of this video, I have just encountered a very interesting um, critique of my religion. Now, I, I am used to hearing all kinds of, you know, reasons why my beliefs can't possibly be true and so on and so forth. Um, but every once in a while I'll come across a, shall we say, unique one. This one is interesting to say the least, just simply because, uh, I'm not going to use the word insane, but it is a bit of a bizarre one. And so I thought I'd just take it to you guys, take it out into the entire world, see what people think about it. Am I right or is the person I, talking to, I was talking to right? So to kind of put this into context, let me explain kind of where this conversation came from and so on. So it happened on Twitter, like so many strange, strange conversations happen. Um, talking to uh, a gentleman who, uh, mostly about uh, biblical translations, mainly comparing the King James Version to the New International Version of the Bible, and going back and forth. Now, the gentleman I was talking to was uh, very familiar with the Greek and the Hebrew uh, Bibles, and how the translation came from that to that, so he's quite knowledgeable about that. And he took the position that the changes from KJV to NIV were mostly um, clarifying changes and just made it easier to understand what the Bible was saying. Now, my position was that even a s tiny change in to a sentence can, can potentially completely alter the sentence. And as a result, the scriptures from uh, changed, say, a, a verse in K... KJV was then very different verse in, in the NIV. Um, so as you can imagine, we had quite a lively discussion uh, based on our own little um, perspectives on it. Um, so every once in a while, and the, sadly this happens I think a lot with a lot of people in, in debate, sadly a lot of Christians jump to this, but he would make a statement, he made this about six or seven times, where he, he would essentially say, well, why do you even have an opinion on the Bible? You believe in the Book of Mormon. Um, which generally is kind of a deflection, I've, I've found, is they can't imme answer my immediate question, so they deflect to kind of, you know, well, you're not allowed to have an opinion because, you know, you have a different belief system than I, I do. And I, I've always found this to be a rather... Uh, condescending, shall we say, point of view, it, it, it does seem, yeah, not good. <laughs> not a good way to have kind of a serious debate. It, it seems to be implying that because I have a different belief system, I'm obviously ignorant, but this other person has a much better belief system, so they know what they're talking about. Which, you know, yeah, I, I don't care who you are, that, that sort of thing always kind of rubs you the wrong way, and I think that was kind of the point, to kind of deflect to that. So I, I'm only mentioning this to explain kind of how we got off biblical translation and got on to um, the translation of the Book of Mormon. So to kind of give you a little bit of background, I'm presuming you know nothing about the Book of Mormon or our beliefs. So uh, what our beliefs are is that in the 19th century, a young man named Joseph Smith received uh, numerous uh, prophetic visions and visitations from angels and God the Father and Jesus Christ. And, you know, eventually uh, he, he was led to, in, to unearth an ancient record um, that, uh, that was uh, written in, in an old, old language uh, on plates of gold, golden plates. It was engraved into the plates. And the, this young man, Joe Smith, subsequently translated these these ancient writings with, uh, through the inspiration of God, was able to translate them and that became the Book of Mormon. Um, 
Now, he translated these plates, and this is important to kind of what the person's comment was. He translated them into English, specifically the Eastern American English that was used at the time of translation, early 19th century. Uh, and that's, that's very important, as I said. So this, this person I was talking to, the critique about the translation of the Book of Mormon was that Joseph Smith should not have translated it into English, but instead should have been translated it into Greek. Now, it, it took me a lot of back and forth to try and figure out why he thought this was a good idea, and I don't think he was trying to be deliberately um, obtuse or, or to make me ask questions. I think he actually presumed that I would automatically agree with this and would say, oh, you know what, you have a good point. So it, it was hard to kind of get why he thought it should be translated into Greek, but here's I can tell, and you know I'm I'm guessing at a few of these things. So, you know if I, if I'm doing him a disservice to his position, I apologize. But um, his opinion was that Joseph Smith should have translated the Book of Mormon into Greek, should have submitted um, the the Book of Mormon now in Greek to um, the biblical scholars of the time. I presume members of this gentleman's church, and that these biblical scholars should then have kind of compared it to the Greek Bible, and you know did a big compare and contrast to determine whether it truly became of God or not, essentially to vet it, and that they would then translate it into English for, you know, the common people of Eastern America at the time to be able to read it after they had vetted it. Vetted it. <laughs> and so, my, my check, you know, and I think this position came, like I said, he was familiar with Hebrew and the Greek, and I think he had been in a lot of seminary type things where he studied a lot of this, and I think his perspective came from that position of, well, I've been in these scholarly researches, so, anything from God would go through biblical scholars and would be presented in this way. So my objection to it, I, I have two basic objections to it, and they're not so much religious as they are pragmatic. So my first objection to it being translated into Greek is just quite simply, God has never, if, if God has a message for somebody, it's always revealed either in a way they immediately understand it or there is a method and a means by which they can understand God's message. And, you know, as an example, I'm going to give uh, Pharaoh. Pharaoh had this, quite frankly, insane dream that he knew was important, but he couldn't quite understand it. It was like thin cows eating fat cows and, you know, what the heck's going on. But, you know, as it happens, Pharaoh's cook had just been in prison, and the cook knew this guy who, who had been in prison for years through betrayals, through false allegations, was put into prison, but this guy could interpret dreams. And because this means for Pharaoh to interpret his, the dreams came about, Egypt was able to prepare for the famine, for an upcoming famine that that was what the uh, dream was about and was able to, you know, thrive during, you know, the years that this famine went on. Um, as, of course, I'm sure you've figured out, I am talking about uh, Joseph in the Old Testament. And, and the point is always the same. If God wants to give a message, he will provide a quick and easy way for that message to be understood. So... You know, presuming, as I do, that Joseph Smith was a prophet and the Book of Mormon was translated by the power of God, he would translate it in a way so that the common people would be able to understand it. And ultimately, that's what the Book of Mormon is meant for. It's meant for people, regardless of where of the walk of life they come from, regardless of whether they're scholars or not, to be able to, you know, take a look at the Book of Mormon and to judge for themselves whether it's true or not. That's the entire purpose of it, whatever your personal beliefs about it are. So my second objection is the time it would take to translate. So let, let's be fair. 
even even today this would probably happen but biblical scholars of the time even um, would probably take at the very least two decades to translate the Book of Mormon from English to or from Greek to English um, Joseph Smith did it in just under two months so you know it you know once again presuming he was a prophet and he did translate it you know that's a pretty quick a much quicker turnover and I think it got the message out in a more timely fashion so yep that that's that's my opinion on this so let me know what you think let me know if you think hey this other guy has a really good point it should have been translated into greek this is why or if you think nope nope you're you're right this is a really strange thing it it makes sense that it was translated into english and yep like and subscribe um if you have if you have I'm going to throw this out as a challenge. If, if you have something that you think, well, this maybe doesn't prove that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is, is, is not true, but hey, I have this evidence that does, go, go ahead and present it to me. I would love to hear it. I would love to comment on it. Um, yeah, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.